Hello again everyone and welcome to another training video brought to you by Dalton Trucking. In this video you're going to learn about gate safety and washout procedures. So let's go ahead and kick it off and you can join me over at the wash rack where I'll show you how to properly wash out your bottom dump trailer. So the first thing you want to do when you pull up to wash out your truck, you want to make sure you're lined up straight, that way you're not going to hit our wash rack facilities or bang them up when you enter or exit the wash rack area. Also when you're walking up and down the stairs here, always use the three points of contact. Same safety rules apply here as they do in any other plant. So first when you're washing out your trailers here in the bottom dump division, you want to wash from the top to the bottom, just like you're washing your car. That way you never have to go over something twice. As you see, I simply washed out one side of my trailer from the top here, then I'm going to go around my trailer and climb up the other wash rack and wash the other side because I couldn't reach it from the first side. Yeah, so same thing here, we're washing from top to bottom, make sure we get all the dust and dirt and big clumps out. And as soon as we're all done cleaning the top portion of our trailer here, we're going to go ahead and move down to the gates. Remember, before you go underneath your trailers, always have the key in your pocket, your tires chalked, and your brakes set. Also, it's very important to never let your hands go within the side inside of the gate area because it could become harmful to your hands or any other bodily part of you and actually could be fatal. So here, as you can see, I'm pointing the hose up into the gate so I can clean inside of the gates, but my hand will not go inside that no zone of the gates. So as you can see, I'm very much so focusing on gate safety here. We want to make sure none of our body parts enter into that no zone of the gate. I can't stress that enough. So when you're finished washing this side of the gate, you can go ahead and kink your hose, exit carefully, and proceed to the other side of the gate and repeat the same exact process. Again, when you're entering and exit the gate area, you want to make sure you have good footing so that way you're not going to slip and fall or anything like that. Again, I'm making sure that my arms or any part of my body uh, does not enter that no zone of the gate area. And we're just basically doing the same thing that we did on the other side, rinsing out the bottom of the gates, the kind of area that you're not going to be able to, to reach when washing on top of the wash rack from above. So we want to make sure our gate's nice and clean so that way we can load another type of material in here without cross-contamination. When you're finished again, kink your hose and exit safely. So now that I'm finished washing the A-trailer part of my combination here, I'm just going to go ahead and jump back in my truck, pull forward slightly, nice and slow so I don't damage anything, to where the B-trailer is correctly positioned between the two wash racks. All I'm going to do here is repeat the same step as the A-trailer, washing the trailer from the top on, the, on top of the wash racks, and then proceeding below to the bottom of my gate area and washing my gate out from the bottom nice and safely. Now remember, it is Dalton's policy to wash out your trailers and your gates every day after work. The reason for this is cross-contamination. Now what's cross-contamination? So let's just say I have, uh, let's say I'm loading a load of mill scale and I'm delivering it the, today. And tomorrow I've got a load of clay that's got to go up. Well, if I don't wash out my trailers and I'm, by the time I deliver that clay, well, it's going to have some mill scale in it. And I'll tell you what, those cement companies might be a little bit ticked off to learn that their clay is cross-contaminated with mill scale. Now that my trailers are all clean, I'm just going to go ahead and exit the wash rack area. Nice and slow again. We want to make sure we don't hit any of the wash rack area. Be careful when you make this turn. It might be sharp. And we're just going to pull off to the side and we're going to tarp our trailer for the next day.
So here I am. I'm going to go ahead and roll my tarps back up to make sure I'm ready for the next day. Go ahead and undo my bungee cord that's safely securing my tarp handle to my ladder there. Start unrolling until the tarp is fully unrolled, but as you can see, it's not fully on the other side of the trailer. So I just pick it up and kind of pry it right there and that'll that'll flip it on the other side there. Now we're just going to repeat the same process as I did with the A trailer, here with the B trailer, but notice one difference. With this one, I'm going to flip it. When I flip the, the front of my tarp over, it's going to be flipped hard enough to where the straps follow with it, so I don't have to use a tarp hook. As you can see, both straps came down towards where my ratchets are, so I don't have to grab those with the tarp hook. Next I'm just going to go along the side of my trailer and put my straps in my ratchets here and make sure they're nice and tight. The reason why we want them nice and tight is uh, basically fuel savings and, and help for you. So imagine you're driving down the highway at 60 miles an hour, 55 miles an hour and your front strap isn't tight enough. Well what that's going to do is it's going to pick up your tarp in the front it's almost going to act like you're pulling a sail down the highway. Now just imagine how that can affect your miles per gallon. Now it may not matter much to you whether you save one or two miles per gallon per day, but it really does to our company. Now imagine that one or two miles per gallon a day spread across our fleet for two or three weeks. That could be a few tires that we can now afford to purchase as opposed to not because we're saving the money on the fuel. Okay, now that we're done tarping our trailer for the next day, it's now safe to go park it and go home. And now we're going to go to Jay where he'll show you how to properly install your gate guards. Hi, I'm Jay here with Dalton Trucking and I'm here to show you how to properly use your trailer gate guards. First thing we want to do is to ensure that the tractor that we are using is off. We want to ensure that we have chocks in the case of an accidental roll so that you're safe. And third is that you want to have the tractor key in your pocket at all times. Now we can proceed with the installation procedure. This is your trailer gate guard. You will need two on an installation of this size. First thing we want to do is to open our gates physically using the hand valve. You want to ensure that no one is present when you're doing this. So an all clear, just in case another person is present when you are going to physically open the gates. We're clear! At this point, the trailer gate is energized with air. So before we put our guards in, at this point we are energized. So note at this point that you do not want your hands or your head in the no zones. Because if anything is present in the no zones in an accidental close, that's when you can get harmed. Okay, first step of the procedure is to install one side of the gate guard. Pull the safety pin out of place. When using the guard, you want to ensure that the gate pin install is on your side when you're installing it. And again, you want to keep your head and your arms out of the no zone. Okay, when installing, you're on the ground. Simply move the sides into position. Get your safety pin when it's at an angle that can be used and you push it into place. At this point, we're going to install the second gate jar. Again, ensure that your head and arms are out of the no zone. In case of an accidental de-energize where the gate wants to close, you want to keep yourself out of harm's way. Just like the other side, we want to position it again. Okay. 
All clear. At the point where you have put both of your gate guards in and they're present, at this point is when we go to the de-energizing of the air system. Now Dalton Trucking has installed Quick Connects for easy access to de-energizing the actual air system itself. On some trailer applications, you do have to release the energy by physically pushing the valve in. This happens to be one of those, so now that I've disconnected it, I will release the energy by pushing the valve in. This ensures that there is no energy so that that valve cannot close on its own. Okay, now that our gate guards have been installed, at this point is when you can proceed with your repairs. But note, as a qualified technician, I do know at points that my hands and head can be physically prone to being in the no zones. But I am a trained personnel and at no point should you ever take it for granted that these things aren't dangerous and that they can kill you. Remember, always ensure that you're safe and be safe. Okay, now we're gonna to go to the shop to show you why gate safety is so important here. Hi everybody, I'm Brian Keogh. And I'm Al Leon. And today we're gonna to be your commentators for this historical event between the gates and the obstacles. But now we are gonna to go to Brain Keot, who is down on the shop floor. All right, we're here today with our shop personnel. We're gonna have some fun, fresh and some coconuts. All right, so we're in the shop. We're about to set up our coconut on our stand. Uh, remember, this is a controlled environment and all safety precautions have been taken here. The tires are chopped, the key is out of the ignition. And as soon as we set this up, we're gonna pull the pin out and we're gonna go ahead and set it up and crush some coconut. What do you think, guys? Okay. All right. Okay, so we're about to crush our coconut. We're gonna put it in place. I can't stress enough, this is a controlled environment and to never try this on your own. Okay, everyone exit. Clear. Okay, we're clear. I'm clear, I'm locked in. Okay, open it up. Open it. Lock it. Ah. See, the coconut destroyed completely. It takes 15 pounds of pressure to destroy a human skull and 20 pounds of pressure to destroy a coconut. So as you can see, the coconut, which is stronger than a human skull, didn't stand a chance in these gates. And we're back. Thank you, Brain, for that wonderful demonstration. Hey, Al, check out this watermelon. Oh, that was a painful one. <laughs> yeah, I think that would have hurt, man. Now, granted, a watermelon's not very strong, but uh, it sure is messy. What do you think? Oh, look at that mess. Yeah, I think we could have had No a... competition for them gates. <laughs> we might be able to have a, uh, uh, what, a, a salad out of that or something, huh? Uh, no, what? not much. Just looks like road mess. <laughs> what do they call that? Like a, <laughs> a, a fruit tray? Yeah. Think safely. <laughs> Yeah, make sure to think safety on that one. <laughs> Who put that in there? <laughs> that is amazing, though. Imagine if someone's uh, body part was in the middle of that. And, oh, here's a slow mo picture of the uh, the coconut. <laughs> oh, you can hear that all the way to Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, that sure is juicy, isn't it? Oh, oh, there goes the jack o' lantern. Oh no. <laughs> No good for Halloween. Gonna miss this one. No, well, we might be able to make some pie. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Bad pie. <laughs> I think so. What kind of melon is that, Al? Is that a honeydew? I don't know. What, it's a squash melon. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, that's Anybody exactly. heard of squash before? It's squash. Well, we just did the squash. It was a <laughs> pumpkin, right? Oh, yeah. I don't think these are any good anymore. That's an air filter right there. Check that out, Al. An air filter? I'm sorry. No, no, no. That's an oil filter. <laughs> At the moment, I don't see any more filter. <laughs> no. Maybe, maybe this is how we do our recycling, huh? <laughs> oh, anyone got some chips? Oh, check this out. I, I love this one here. So far, so good. It's battling back. And... 
Uh oh. Uh oh, here it comes. Oh! oh. What a fight that one put up. <laughs> it definitely did. Somebody go get the Doritos. <laughs> And here it goes, Gates versus Obstacles. No question right there. Oh my gosh. Just destroyed it like it was butter. Don't eat, you can't even look at it. No, don't look. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like it's got a mouth though. <laughs> oh, here you go, Hawaii. Anyone got a straw? Oh man. Look right at all through. that good juice went to waste. Right through it, right through it. That's not the way to open them. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Oh, yeah. Oh, gates are up uh, 11 to 0 so far. You think they're going to maintain their lead? Come on, obstacles. One of you fight back. Oh, here we go. Two liter RC Cola. Here we go. Oh, my no. Gosh, no. No, oh, that wasn't very good. I don't think that survived. Uh oh. Recycle. It looks like it's down for the count. Oh, watch out, Al. Here it comes. Here it comes. Whoa! Oh, no! A fight back. The last. <laughs> the way to rebel. Oh, these obstacles aren't standing a chance versus these gates, are they, Al? No, they're not. Oh, man. Well, there you have it. Blowout victory. The gates win over the obstacles 12 to 0. All right, this completes this training video. Remember to turn in your completed test to your dispatcher or safety department. But first, a warm message from Tom Meshigan. Oh, be safe out there. <laughs>